Edmonds School District Board Directors, Superintendent McDuffie, Assistant Superintendent Schwab, parents, family members, friends, and members of the class of 2020. Welcome to our 21st Edmonds Heights K-12 commencement. I'm Dr. Scott Mock, Principal of Edmonds Heights. On behalf of the Edmonds Heights K-12 staff and workshop instructors, we are grateful you are watching tonight to help us honor and celebrate these young people and their accomplishments. These are certainly unusual circumstances, and your support of our students is important and cherished. Students of the class of 2020, tonight we say so long and wish you well on your journey. It is an auspicious and challenging start to your journey, but you are well equipped as independent-minded learners with initiative, pluck, and a commitment to yourselves and your families. You may notice later some of our seniors are wearing cords over their gowns. The yellow and blue cords are worn by those students honored by the National Thespian Society. The red, white, and blue cords are worn by students who are honored by the FIRST Robotics Competition. And the blue and white cord is for students who have received the seal of bioliteracy. So a few thank yous. First of all, thank you to Todd Covell and the orchestra. Um, they played pomp, pomp and Circumstance for us at the beginning. Um, the orchestra members who helped us are Abigail Bishop, Lucia Burry, Juliana Burry, Victor Burry, Jesse Hall, Kayla Hall, Caleb Jacobs, and Noor Khatib. Also want to give a big, huge, enormous thank you, all the things that you don't see right now that are set up for this graduation, uh, are all of our community partners and our incredible office team who helped set this up and of course the production team who are all around me now, um, but you can't see them. I wish you enjoyment and inspiration for this time we're sharing at a distance on behalf of our seniors. Our superintendent, Dr. Chris McDuffie, is also commencing. She has been doing the world's most important work for over 40 years. During these most unusual times, Dr. McDuffie has been a support to all of us maintaining the integrity of our programs and our commitment to families. She is a stalwart advocate for equity and has helped all of us be better educators on behalf of marginalized communities. I'm honored to introduce Dr. McDuffie. Hello, I'm Chris McDuffie, Superintendent. To the very special graduates of the Class of 2020, a heartfelt congratulations. We are so very proud of you and your accomplishments and we know that you are strong, you are resilient, and you will make an impressive mark on the world. On the wall in my office are the words of Albert Einstein. Learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. They have always meant a lot to me. Continue to learn, seek out new and exciting adventures. Try, fail, and try again. It's what makes us the best that we can be. Live fully in the moment. Always be present. Show courage, compassion, and kindness. And never lose hope for tomorrow. When times are tough and the clouds just seem to linger, remember, there will be brighter days ahead. From my heart to yours, take care of yourselves. Enjoy the journey. We are so very proud of you and wish you the very best. Each year, our senior musical theater students come together to bring us a piece from the shows that they like. This year, under the direction of Christopher Puckett, they performed virtually and, like our orchestra, synchronized the final piece for us. You are really going to enjoy this. This is from the Broadway musical Matilda, uh, and it's called When I Grow Up. It is performed by Emilio Ceja. Mariah Graves, Paige Matheson, Mia Parrott, Matthew Pullum, Katie Schnauz, Natasha Thompson, and Skylar Veda. When I grow up, I will be tall enough to reach the branches that I need to reach to climb the trees. You get to When I grow up, I will be smart enough to answer all the questions. 
questions that you need to know the answers to before you're grown up. And when I grow up, I will eat sweets every day on the way to work and I will go to bed late every night. And I will wake up when the sun comes up and I will watch cartoons until my At each commencement, we also have seniors who volunteer to speak on behalf of the class. This year, three of our seniors have been working on their speeches for several weeks. These three speakers weave together a larger story about what it's like to grow up at Edmonds Heights. They are Daniel Ramirez, Kash Iqbal, and Skylar Veda. I am extremely proud to be a 2020 graduate along with my fellow graduates. I also want to thank Skylar and Kosh for participating in this experience of speaking during this graduation and wish you both good luck on your speeches. I'm sure you'll, they'll do, I'm sure you'll do great. I remember that before I came to Edmonds Heights K-12 as a young boy at the age of 13, I was lost, I felt like I had nowhere to go. I had this feeling of emptiness, this feeling of depression, and this feeling of no love in my life besides my loving and caring family. I thought to myself, there must be more to life than this. I never gave up hope and knew that there was a wonderful experience out there waiting for me. An experience where I could meet mentors that could take me under their wing and teach me their ways of life. This brings me to the wonderful experience I found at the School of Edmonds Heights K-12. My first year in eighth grade when I came into Washington State History taught by Maggie Daly. Maggie is one of the most caring and loving people I have ever met. She loves her students and validates those who have potential. When I took her class, it gave me hope and that Edmonds Heights was the right school for me. Maggie opened a new door for me and made me realize that there were people out there that would love you for who you are. Maggie, I love you 
and thank you for teaching me your ways. It was then this year I joined Demona Lavari's pre-algebra class, where I had the opportunity to not only learn about math, but experience her amazing, inspirational speeches and teach me her ways of life and wisdom. Demona gave me confidence and courage to voice my opinion. And throughout the years, I had the chance to look up to a teacher in ways I thought I would never look up to before. Demona, I love you and thank you for teaching me your ways. It was at this point I completed eighth, gr eighth grade and was to continue being a great student in high school. I felt this sense of courage and I knew I was in for quite a ride. This year I signed up for a new teacher who would eventually become my favorite out of all of them. Her name is Christina Miles. Christina not only taught me the beauty of writing and creativity, but managed to build my confidence, have faith in me, and most of all, make me laugh with her memorable jokes. Christina, I love you and thank you for teaching me your ways. I also remember learning Spanish that year with one of my favorite personal teachers. Her name is Senora Swinson, and man, where do I even begin with this amazing teacher? The amount of affection, understanding, and pure energy every time I walk into her class. The amount of pride, caring, and love I gathered from taking Spanish with her was absolutely marvelous. Senora Swinson, I love you, and thank you for teaching me your ways. There was another teacher I respect and admire through the years of my high school. She was the science teacher, the one and only Micaiah Marzano. When I was learning under her, I not only gathered inspiration, but also learned about kindness, having fun, and engaging with other people in the class, and having fun in the moment. Micaiah, I love you, and thank you for teaching me your ways. After my wild ride with ninth grade, I entered into a brand new sophomore year along with a brand new history teacher I was so excited to learn under. His name is Joseph Erickson, and this teacher is probably the greatest inspirational teacher I've look, looked up to for the past three years. Joseph, in the years I've learned under you, it's been an honor to learn how to use this privilege to help those in need, to provide inspiration to others with my voice, and learn about fighting against the injustice and the evils of this world, and face them with dignity and courage. Joseph, I love you, and thank you for teaching me your ways. Finally, I want to thank Principal Scott Mock for the true leadership and the opportunities provided to students who need a somewhere safe to learn. Principal Scott, it was an outstanding journey to learn under this fantastic school you lead with grace and respect, and to serve under you and help in any way I can to provide opportunity to those in need. Brother, I love you, and thank you for providing me with these opportunities that I can learn at Edmonds Heights K-12. I learned very much going into this school, and I am very sad to leave so soon. There comes a time in every man's life where he needs to make an ultimate decision and move on with his life with the lessons he has learned. To love, to treat others in the way that he wants to be treated, to, to respect everyone as a whole, but most of all, to be persistent, stay motivated, and to never give up in life no matter what. In this mindset, you will find the people who will support you and love you regardless of what gender, race, or religion. Edmonds Heights, I thank you for this experience. Because of your teachings, I can now apply these lessons to my own life and lead my life with dignity, trust, confidence, and most of all, the courage to find people that will love me and support me for who I am. Edmonds Heights, I say to you, farewell and hope to see you again soon. Graduating high school for many teenagers is seen as a doorway to freedom. As Americans, probably the word we hear most in our lives is the word freedom. And yet, we rarely take a few minutes to contemplate on just exactly what that word means. And I think it's a shame, because the word freedom isn't just a buzzword to be used at political speeches or for gathering support for agendas that don't further freedom's interests. So what exactly is freedom? Well, if you were to ask the dictionary, it would say that freedom is the condition of being free of restraints, especially the ability to act without control or interference by another or by circumstance. 
And when most people will read that definition, they will think of freedom being stripped away from you with images such as Chinese Muslims in concentration camps, the East German Stasi, or the brutal prisons of Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad. But freedom doesn't just mean having a sword or the threat of, the threat of prison or brutality hanging over your head. Sometimes, the freedom we really need most is freedom from ourselves. Social media is, gigant is a gigantic business that brings in billions of dollars every year. If you've ever wondered how they make their billions, the answer is by selling us. We are the product. Everything you do on social media, every post you, you make, every comment you make, everything you like, everything you share, is tracked. All of that information is then packeted and then sold. If you've ever, <clears throat> the minute you get off of social media, don't think that you're no longer being followed. Small files called cookies continue to track your, continue to, continue to track your activity on others' websites. If you've ever gotten a, an ad on Instagram for something you watched a video about on YouTube, that wasn't a coincidence. But for some of us, we seem to think of social media as the pinnacle of freedom. Finally, the power of the press and the power of the cable media, which was once bestowed to just a few privileged people, has been unleashed for the masses. Nothing could be further from the truth. Social media companies will follow your political activity, just like they follow all of your other activity. They'll use that information to make sure you only see political posts from people that you agree with. You end up being stuck in a political bubble, only hearing news that computers and server rooms hundreds or thousands of miles away from you deem you want to leave, that deem you want to see. When misinformation such as a conveniently cut video clip or a, or a photograph at a particular camera angle start going around, the only thing that determines whether or not you see it is not how factual the image is, but rather how likely you are to agree with it, like it, and reshare it. Eventually, after being stuck in your political bubble for just a short period of time, you no longer care to leave it. You no longer care to hear any information that opposes the narrative that you support regardless of how valuable or factual this information is. You lose interest in truth and justice, which is why you started your activism in the first place, and instead turn your head to receiving potentially thousands of pats on the back from people who agree with you. You, you misuse powerful, meaningful words and labels to delegitimize anyone who opposes you. Doing good be damned. Sometimes our, sometimes our desire for justice reaches a new level, and we realize how valuable freedom truly is. The murder of George Floyd is a perfect example of us snapping. Thousands of people, not just in America, have poured into the streets around the world in order to demand change and justice. But for some of them, demanding change and justice isn't enough. Some of them seek to use violence. Some of them claim to use violence to achieve their goals. Many more are choosing to take advantage of this man's death and the outrage that came along with it, and profit off of it through theft, or, dis or, or by satisfying their suppressed anger through destruction. When confronted for their crimes, they accuse you of not listening to their original message, when the truth is that these criminals are the ones who have tainted it. Our freedoms are precious but they will only exist so long as we are willing to defend them. Even when protecting them will take sac sacrifice. But when we protect them, it is our duty to ensure that the only people we target are those who have taken our freedoms away from us and not those who have done nothing to strip them from us. This feels very much like an audition, you know? You all should feel very powerful. I'm auditioning to leave and if you don't think I can take on the role of EH graduate, I guess I'll just have to try again next year and maybe that would be best anyway. <laughs> High school for me, as for so many others, has been about shaping myself into a person I want to become. A bit like a Build-A-Bear, but with far fewer instructions and absolutely no return policy. Coming here to Edmonds Heights has been one of the most important things I've done, because through being here, I've discovered my love of theater, and that has shaped me more than anything else. I am I owe my mom acknowledgement for that discovery, and I was reluctant to join, and I want to thank her for smacking some sense into me and making me do it. 
As it turns out, theater is the best thing to have happened to me since my birth. Only mild hyperbole there. I have never felt more proud and free than when I stand on a stage knowing I worked hard to be there. I sought out challenges in theater and I was rewarded for it. I tried everything from acting to stage management to costumes to makeup to glee club. Rest in peace, glee club. I found people who believed in me in theater. I learned to value myself as an individual and as a part of a community. I learned to know my worth because as it turns out, auditioning requires a healthy dose of self-esteem. I have learned a great many things at EH and I bear the mark of all of them. Some you can see like these chords, one for theater and one knowing, one showing that I know how to speak Spanish pretty well. But most of my marks are invisible. One mark shows the moment I discovered my passion for leadership through stage management. Another mark was made by discovering my fascination for the art of improving my voice. And yet another was made by knowing the value of my time and learning how to say no. And that was, that was the most important thing I learned. And this court, this mark of my theater experience, represents so much more than the 17 times I've had my name in a program. It shows four years amongst friends and teachers who believed in me and thought I could be more than what I was and made me believe it too. I thank Christina and Nancy and Joseph for their support and belief in me. And I want to acknowledge Christopher and Dorothy. I am so unbelievably lucky to have had them as teachers. I would be lost without them. And I wish I could see your faces as I say this the faces of my friends and my teachers and of strangers, because we are bound together by one place, one joint identity, our school. I have spent the worst and best days of my life, the worst and best years of my life at Edmonds Heights. I have borne witness to the rise and fall of hapless theatrical and scholastic empires. I have cried from sadness and from laughter, and it's been amazing. I'm not sure, how, I'm not sure people know how much happier I am now than I was four years ago. And maybe that's my fault for not telling them. However, since this is the last occasion I have to say so, thank you and goodbye. Seniors, I am really delighted to oversee your commencement. Like your parents, I remember when my son Sawyer was born and how, uh, how uh, we were in awe that he would be in the class of 2020. And like your parents, I'm wondering uh, what just happened to the last 18 years. I have only one pearl of wisdom for you um, to leave you with. And I cannot, I can't really imagine circumstances other than a pandemic that illustrate this truth more. And there's also a personal story to tell. We are interconnected and we are interdependent. My father passed away in February 2012 during a tremendous snowstorm. Schools were closed, roads were frozen, and everyone was snowbound. On one, snowy, on one of the snowy afternoons, I received a call from the intensive care unit in the Tri-Cities that my father had fallen, was semi-conscious, um, and that my sister and I needed to get to the hospital as soon as possible. They were telling us without telling us that he was dying. My sister drove through the snow for 10 hours from Ben. I booked a flight out of frozen SeaTac. I arrived at my father's bedside 30 minutes after my sister, and 40 minutes later, he was gone. We were able to say goodbye and, and to be with him when he left. It was one of the most important moments of my life. And, and I'm certain that my life would be very different had I not been with him. But that's really not the whole story. The sn that snowbound day my father died, I took a shuttle to the airport from Whidbey Island. My flight was three hours late and may have been the last flight out of SeaTac that night. The Tri-Cities airport was safe for landing, although it was still snowing. And there was a cab driver on duty to get, on duty to get me to the hospital. I cannot tell you the names of the drivers, the ferry workers, the pilots, the ground crew that de-iced the plane, the snowplow drivers, the air traffic controllers, the ticketing agents, or the nurses and doctors who kept my father alive so that we could say goodbye. Yet these people may have been some of the most important people in my life. And if any one of them had not been able to do what they did that night, I would not have been at my father's side when he died. We are interconnected and we are interdependent. Sometimes we will receive, sometimes we will give, sometimes both. Sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's accidental. But at no time are we completely independent from others. You might think you are, but in fact, someone else had some role or another in your life at that moment. Let that steep. So class of 2020, congratulations. 
May you go into the adult world and find happiness and fulfillment and the beauty of the interconnectedness you have with others. We now want to honor our families with the presentation of flowers and certificates. Maggie Daly has been at EHK 12 for 13 years. She has been teaching writing and social studies to some of our most reluctant learners, bringing out their confidence and inspiration. She is, she is a beloved teacher in this incredible faculty. No wonder the class of 2020 selected her to introduce them. After the ceremony, we want you to feel free to take time to congratulate our seniors by tagging them on Facebook, on the Edmonds Heights Facebook page. And we hope that you enjoyed all of this and thanks to everyone who put it together. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the class of 2020. Daniel Ramirez. Daniel Ramirez will attend Shoreline Community College, then transfer to a four-year university to get a degree in finance. He plans to be a financial consultant to help others become financially independent. Kosh Iqbal. Kosh will be finishing an AA degree at Edmonds College and then transferring to the University of Washington where he will pursue engineering or computer science in the hopes of working in space exploration. Mary Schuyler Zark Veda. Schuyler will be attending Lewis and Clark College in Portland this fall, where she'll double major in theater performance and an undecided second major. She is graduating with honors in Spanish language and national honors in theater. She'll miss everyone, but it's a small world. She's sure she'll meet again. Nicholas Enquist. Nicholas will attend Washington Youth Academy through the summer and fall. He wishes to participate in community building and volunteer work. He will join the U.S. Air Force after that. Lainey Peterson. Laney will be attending Western Washington University in the fall to earn a Bachelor's of Arts degree in elementary and special education. She's grateful for all the things she has learned during her years at Edmonds Heights and wants to thank her teachers and family for all of their support. Avery Busig. Avery will be finishing her Associates in Arts from Edmonds Community College, where she will pursue a career in editorial photography. Olivia Gregorich. Olivia will be attending Seattle Pacific University in the fall to pursue a Bachelor of Arts in Clinical Psychology. Her future career goal is to become a child clinical psychologist. She plans to apply for an internship at Seattle Children's Hospital while completing her BA. Michaela Mitchell. Michaela is currently attending Edmonds Community College. She will be moving to Ohio where she will continue exploring her interest in the healthcare profession. Michaela wants to thank her family and friends, including her advisor and teacher, Christina Miles, for all of her support and guidance while attending Edmonds Heights. Laura Perilla. Laura will be attending Seattle University this fall to pursue a Bachelor of Science in Civil and Environmental Engineering. She is thankful for all the good memories and is excited for this next chapter. P. 
Paige Matheson. Paige will be taking a gap year before pursuing a degree in astronomy at the University of Hawaii in Hilo. Paige wants to thank her parents, family, friends, and teachers for helping her to become the person she is today. Jolia Judd. Jolia plans to complete her transfer degree at Edmonds Community College in the fall. She is looking forward to traveling and the new memories she will make. Devin Fontaine. Devin has completed his second year in construction trades at Snow Isle Tech Skills Center and will be employed as a frame tech for a furniture manufacturer in Muckleteo, Washington. As one of Jehovah Witnesses, Devin plans to use his construction skills to help with the building and renovation of Kingdom Halls. Imran Popow. Imran plans to attend the University of Washington after he finishes his prerequisites for computer science this fall at Edmonds Community College. Reagan Frank. Reagan will be getting a job in customer service as she continues to search for a career plan. She would like a career that either involves helping children or adults or some kind of handiwork where she can be creative. Hill. Sarah will be finishing her AA degree in Business Administration at Edmonds Community College next fall. She will then transfer to the University of Washington to pursue a bachelor's degree in Finance and Marketing. Jesus Christian Emiliano Vasquez Ceja. Emiliano plans to pursue his love of performing through musical theater, as well as delving into the world of creative development, beginning with coding. He will finish his AA and hopes to attend University of Washington in the future. Natasha Thompson. Natasha will be taking a gap year to prepare for applying for Cornish College of the Arts in the following year. Oh. Mohammed Mehadi. Al Hamad. Mohammed will be attending the University of Washington this fall. Entering directly to the College of Engineering, where he will pursue a Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering. Mariah Graves. 
Mariah will be attending Northwest University in the fall to pursue a bachelor's in elementary education. She is so grateful to her family, friends, and all the wonderful people she's been able to meet during her high school years. Ali Alzadi. Ali will, con uh, will be continuing his education at Everett Community College, where he will be earning his associate's degree in computer science by winter 2021. Afterwards, he will transfer to a four-year university to earn his bachelor's in computer science. Mohammed Al Zadi. Mohammed will also be continuing his education at Everett Community College, where he will be earning his associate's degree in computer science by winter 2021. Afterwards, he will transfer to a four year university to earn his bachelor's degree in computer science. Caitlin Schnauz. Katie will be attending Shoreline Community College to complete her AA with plans to tra transfer to Western Washington University to pursue a degree in developmental psychology with an emphasis on early education. She's so thankful for the times she's had at Edmond Heights and can't wait to find out what's ahead of her. Matthew Pullum. Matthew plans to finish his associate's degree in general engineering at Edmonds College, after which he aspires to pursue a bachelor's degree and career in engineering. Matthew hopes to repay our school beginning with a continued correspondence with Atomic Robotics as a mentor in the upcoming year. Okay, go ahead, Mia. Mia Parrott. Mia will be attending Webster Conservatory of Theater Arts at Webster University this fall to begin her Bachelor of Fine Arts in acting degree. Hannah Cole Taylor. Hannah will be continuing her education in Chicago in pursuit of a career as a child therapist. Hannah is so grateful for Edmonds Heights and the people she's met there. Hannah is very excited for her new life, but will always keep Edmonds Heights and her Washington home close to her heart. Travis Gunn. Travis will be focusing on his career after high school. He's very thankful for Edmonds Heights for tending to his creative side and sparking an interest in creative writing, which he will also be pursuing in the background. Tanner Day. Tanner will be pursuing a lifelong dream of helping fight for animal cons conservation. He has been accepted in the Woodland Park Zoo Volunteer Program. He enjoyed his time at Edmonds Heights. Jackson Day. Jackson has been accepted in the volunteer program at the Burke Museum. His passions include paleontology and animal conservation. He had a great six years at Edmonds Heights.
Olivia Yarnold. Olivia will continue to work towards a degree in animal science in the fall. attending PIMA Medical School to become a certified phlebotomist and he hopes to continue his work in makeup effects as well. Right. Zainab Alfalabi. Zainab will be attending a local community college in the future to pursue working with and training animals and of course giving them a lot of love. Zainab wants to thank their mom for all of her hard work to help them succeed. They couldn't have gotten this far without her. Zainab would also like to thank the teachers and staff at Edmonds Heights for all of their hard work in helping us all succeed and grow. Zainab's favorite quote is, the world could always use more heroes. Kanish Alganam. Kanish has decided to become an elementary school teacher. She will be attending a local community college, then transferring to complete her degree in the future. She wants to thank her family for always being there for her and those who helped her along the way at Edmonds Heights. Sumeya Alfalabi. Sumeya will be attending Edmonds Community College and then transferring to Everett to finish her nursing degree while focusing on being a prenatal nurse. Sam would like to thank Nancy Chang for getting her through high school at Edmonds Heights and thanks her mom, Vicki Alfalabi, for homeschooling her and making her the person she is today. Sam is also thankful for the acceptance from Edmonds Heights. She will never forget the memories that were built there. She would also like everyone to know that she is the greatest Mimi Lord in existence. Danielle Corella Bragg. Danielle is grateful for her high school experience and the opportunities given to her through Running Start. She was able to travel to Costa Rica during her final semester with the organization Youth with a Mission. Due to COVID-19, Danielle had to leave Costa Rica early, but hopes to return and finish the program later this year. The senior video is a long Edmonds Heights tradition. It tells the stories of our students growing up through the pictures and music they select. We want to thank Cheryl Kite, who put together this year's video. According to the World Health Organization, we are now in a global pandemic. One of the first known cases of coronavirus in the United States, as well as fatalities, were in the state of Florida. By first order, we'll close all K-12 public and private schools in every district across the state of Florida.
Nobody likes you, no. Nobody cares. Nobody wants you, no. Nobody cares. To extend a greeting, a connecting lands. Life is just a jaded game to them. They will give it a chance. But you know when I know that the galaxies are wrong. Keep the picture saved in a safe place Wow, I look so weird here My face has changed now It's a big shame So many feelings struggling to leave my mouth And it's not that rare for me to let myself down in a big way But I had enough time and I found enough reason to accept
जो हमसे दूर May you have auspiciousness and causes of success. May you have the confidence to always do your best. May you take no effort in your being generous, sharing what you can, nothing more, nothing less. May you know the meaning of the word happiness. May you always lead from the beating in your chest. May you be treated like an esteemed guest. May you get to rest. May you catch your breath. May the best of your todays be the worst of your tomorrows. Whoa. May the road less paved be the road that you follow. She keeps them away shunned on in a pretty cabinet. Let them eat cake, she says, just like Marie Antoinette. A building a remedy for Chris Job and Kennedy. And any time an invitation you can take. Caviar and cigarettes, well versed in etiquette, extraordinarily nice. She's a killer, queen, got body gelatine. Beam. Guaranteed ah, to blow ah, your mind ah, ah, Recommended at the price Insatiable and appetite Wanna try I'm gonna tell you what I gotta do To make my dreams come true Work hard, pray more, dream big Work hard, pray more, dream big I'm gonna tell you what I gotta do To make my dreams come true Work hard, pray more, dream big. Work hard, pray more, dream big. Yeah. They say reality is often closer than we think. But in reality, it's closer than your mind can think. Because you thought it through a thought that you made it up. But your mind was ahead of you. Set a table for two. Talking to myself like every day. Sweep my goals on paper, put it in the microwave. I'm trying to write down the vision. I make it plain, hurry up, drive through. Fast lane, gotta do. To make
Every inch of me is trembling, but not from the cold. Something is familiar, like a dream I can reach, but not quite hold. I can sense you there, like a friend I've always known. Now that we're men, we can do anything. Now that we're men, we are invincible. Now that we're men, we'll go to shows and get the crown, save the town and Mr. Grant. Now that we're men, we have facial hair. Now that we're men, I change my underwear. Now that we're men, we got a bad way flair. We got the stuff we're tough enough to save the day. We never had a chance for we were kids! No, no, no! But we'll take a look at what the moment did! Ha, ha, ha! Robin Hood and Little John walking through the forest Laughing back and forth at what the other has to say Reminiscing this and that and having such a good time Oodle lolly, oodle lolly, golly, what a day Never ever thinking there was danger in the water They were drinking, they just guzzled it down Never dreaming that a scheming sheriff and his posse Was a-watching them and gathering around Robin Hood and Little John running through the forest Jumping fences, dodging trees and trying to get away Contemplating nothing but escaping, finally making it a oodle lolly oodle lolly golly what a day From now, we'll all be gone All our friends will move away And they're going to better places But our friends will be 